Now for the fun stuff. I think this is the part I found most interesting while making this content. We're going to look at routing policies. These control which routes are imported to and exported from the routing table, as well as any extra attributes applied to them. Just like any enterprise grade vendor, Junos can manipulate routes and their attributes. For example, the AS path and local preference in BGP, or the metric in OSPF. We can also filter routes that we're willing to accept from neighbors, called importing in Junos, as well as the routes we export to neighbors, simply called exporting. Speaking of exporting, we can export routes from one routing protocol to another. For example, we may learn routes from RIP and then advertise them in OSPF. You might know this under the name route redistribution. In fact, we'll try exactly that in the lab on the website. In Junos, all importing and exporting takes place from the viewpoint of the routing table. It is core to all routing policies. When neighbors send routes, they pass through an import policy. This may filter routes so they never end up in the routing table. Or perhaps the policy will manipulate route settings like the metric before they reach the routing table. Once the routes make it into the routing table, the best are selected to be placed in the forwarding table. On the other side, we can use policies to control which routes are advertised to neighbors. We can also manipulate attributes at this point too. These policies are called export policies. A route needs to be active in the routing table before they can be evaluated by an export policy. Junos comes with a series of default routing policies which control how routes are handled if we haven't configured our own. In most cases, the rules are simple. If a route is learned from one neighbor, advertise them to other neighbors. However, there is a different default import and export routing policy for each routing protocol, and sometimes the behavior is a bit surprising. Here is a summary of the behavior of each routing protocol. We're going to look at the basics of how these protocols behave and why. BGP is special as it has a few additional tables called rib in and rib out. Rib in contains all the prefixes that have been learned from peers. These prefixes then pass through a route policy where they're filtered and modified as needed. The surviving prefixes are then added into the INET0 or INET60 routing table. The default import routing policy is to accept all prefixes without modification and install them into the routing table. The same concept works for rib out. An export policy will select routes from the routing table, apply any necessary modifications, and put the resulting prefixes in rib out. Anything in rib out is then shared with peers. The default BGP export policy accepts all active prefixes into rib out without modification. The details of ISIS are a bit beyond the scope of this series, so for now, think of ISIS as a routing protocol that behaves in a very similar way to OSPF. These protocols use a link state database to build a view of the entire network area, which is built by flooding LSA messages between neighbors. All neighbors must have identical copies of the LSDB. The default import policy is to accept all routes and import them into the routing table. This policy can't be overridden because the LSDB should never be filtered or changed. To do so would mean that neighbors would not have identical databases. The default export policy is to reject all routes. Sounds crazy, right? But when you think about it, it's really not. Neighbors share routes by flooding LSA messages, which comes out of the LSDB, not the routing table. So an export policy is not required. Remember, in Junos, routing policies are routing table centric. Here's one that's a bit wild. The default RIP import policy will accept all routes and install them into the routing table. However, the default export policy is to reject everything. This means that a route learned from one RIP neighbor will not be advertised to another RIP neighbor. Once again, this sounds crazy, but this really shows two things about Juniper. One is a low opinion of RIP, which I think most network engineers will agree with, and the second is Juniper's history in the service provider market. RIP was never used much by service providers, although I can think of a case where it definitely was, so Juniper never had much use for it. However, if we really want to use RIP, 
we can create our own policy to override this behavior. To start with, I found this to be one of the trickiest concepts to get my head around, especially around export policies for OSPF and ISIS. So take your time on this and remember to think about it from the perspective of the routing table. Let's put all of this into action. We're going to use route policies to advertise some static routes into OSPF. The router we're using is called R1, and it already has a few OSPF neighbors. There are also a few active static routes in the routing table. So how do you think we can add these into OSPF? We need to use an export policy. This is because we're exporting routes from the routing table into OSPF. So step one is to create a policy statement under the policy options hierarchy. Each policy statement needs a name, so we'll call ours OSPF export. Remember a few videos ago when we looked at firewall filters? Well, I hope you were paying attention because firewall filters are used in the configuration of routing policies. We'll start by creating a term called redistribute static. Technically, we can have a single unnamed term if we want, but for organization and troubleshooting, I prefer to name all my terms. Next, we need to match conditions with the from statement. The first condition we're interested in is the protocol type. We only want to match static routes. To be a bit more specific, we will limit our matching to only 192.168.2540/24. There are two ways we could do this. One is called a route filter, and the other is a prefix list. A prefix list is defined separately, contains groups of networks, and can be reused in other policies. Route filters are defined inside the policy and have advanced matching options. So we'll use a route filter, include the subnet. If I use the question mark now, you can see the additional matching options. We can match several networks with longer or the or longer statements. We only want to match one network, so exact fits our needs. If we want to, we can also apply an action on the very same line when we're using a route filter. Try playing with this in the lab if you can. And finally, we set our action with the then statement. The second half to this process is applying the policy. We're exporting from the routing table to OSPF. So we apply this policy to OSPF as an export policy. Just for interest's sake, it's also possible to apply an export policy to the forwarding table too. This controls which routes are exported from the routing table to the forwarding table. Let's take a look to see if this worked. Over on router R2, we can confirm that we have learned this route through OSPF. As these weren't originated in OSPF, they're listed as external routes. There are two types of external routes called type one and type two. Type two is the default. The two types of routes refer to how cost or metric is calculated for this route. When we redistribute a route, it's given a cost. For example, it may have a cost of 10. When the type 2 route is being shared with neighbors, the cost does not change. When a type 1 route is being shared with neighbors, the original cost is added to the cost of any links between the neighbors. This means that the cost to reach the route increases with each hop. As you can see, the route we redistributed is a type 2 route. With that in mind, let's take this a step further and edit our policy to also redistribute 192.168.253.0 as a type 1 route. To do this, we're creating a new term called redistribute static E1. Remember that terms are evaluated in the order they're entered, so this will be evaluated after the term we've already created. Just as before, we're going to match static routes and use a route filter to match 192.168.253.3/24. Just for fun, we're using or longer this time. The real difference is with the action. In fact, we need two actions, the first being to set the external type to 1. The second, as before, is to accept. Moving over to R2 now, we can see that OSPF is learning this route as well. Digging into the LSDB, we can see that this has been learned as a type 1 route. Think back to the policy that we created for a moment. We have two terms 
and they're evaluated in the order that they're listed in the config. What if we want to change the order? Do we have to reconfigure the policy from scratch? Fortunately, no. Although that would work, there is a better way. It's quite simple. We edit the policy, and then we use insert to move our second term before our first term. You can see now that this has been reordered. One more trick before we finish up. If we're redistributing static routes with a policy, we may find that new static routes that we create are automatically redistributed too. It all depends on how we configure our policy, of course, but there are times when we definitely don't want this to happen. One option is to reconfigure our policy to somehow prevent the static route from being matched, but that can be a bit tricky. A better way is to configure a static route with the no advertise keyword at the end. This simply prevents the static route from being redistributed into a dynamic routing protocol. Over on R2, we can see that this particular route is no longer learned through OSPF. Four more questions for you to try. I suggest paying special attention to question number nine. We should be pretty comfortable with routing concepts now, but have you looked into the concept of multiple routing tables? You may have heard of this by the name VRF Lite. Juniper's version, called Routing Instances, is the topic of our next video.